What's going on, guys? KG here from the Football Capital, and this is the Sydney Derby preview. And on the panel today, I'm I'm got some distinguished guests from all around Australia. Um, I've got uh, Antonio. Um, Antonio, please walk, you know, welcome, and just tell us a little bit about um, yourself and your channels and and where we can find you. Obviously, uh, thanks, of, of course, for having me on the podcast. It's great. Um, obviously, out from Western Sydney, so it's a big game for me coming up. Um, I'm from the Football Tragics. We do talk more Premier League action, but we do like to dazzle and have a bit of a chat about A-League. So definitely jump on board. And again, pleasure to be on here and pleasure to meet these other two boys. And um, and you obviously, uh, you throw the egg ball around a little bit and talk about, uh, talk about that as well. Yeah, that's at the Gorn for 10 show. So it's a little thing we... Put on, I guess, to kind of talk a little bit about it. Um, rugby league fans, if you are listening to this, please jump across, give us a subscribe and chuck those likes and help us grow. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, we'll go over to Dia. Dia from Sydney Football TV. Tell us a little about yourself, mate. Uh, I am Sydney Football TV, previously known as the Football State. I do A-League, NPL, Socceroos, uh, all sorts of content on those and... The reason I started the channel was because I saw that there is a lack of A-League channels on YouTube. So I thought, why not? I'll just step up and I'll do it. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started. And I appreciate the invite, Kev. So thanks for having me. And it's a pleasure. Always, mate. Always. And um, and finally, we've got Eddie. Eddie from uh, Let's Talk It Out podcast. Eddie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, look, thanks for having me on as well. Um Look, at, I've, I've been a Sydney FC fan, fanatic, if you want to call it that, since we obviously came on board um, back in 04, basically. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of, a lot of um, you know, a bit of tension there with, with my my family who are really diehard Wanderers fans. But, um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm currently, like you said, part of the Let's Talk It Out podcast, um, raising mental health for, for men as well. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to raise awareness one podcast at a time. But, um, yeah, look, really excited for the derby this weekend and really just – Really, really to get um, you know, cracking on the on the topic of the, the derby. You know, it's always a it's always a like a like a like for like one. So, yeah, it's it's finally here. Um, and look, first and foremost, a great collaboration. I think of getting you know all of us on the on the same pod, and we're going to talk football, obviously. But there is there is a lot of content between the four channels, and I just want to acknowledge that. So, you know, we will plug it at the end again, but like, share, and subscribe as much as you can, guys, and jump on everybody else's channels. We want to see um, us obviously covering football, but talking a lot and, and raising the profile of the game. Um, you know, as as Dia said, you know, there wasn't really much content out there for, for a lot of A-League lovers, and now we're starting to see it grow. So um, just want to continue to push that as much as we possibly can. But it is time for the derby. There is a red half. There is a blue half. We're going to get into the, a bit of conversation. And I, I guess um, <clears throat> both teams coming off a, a, off a loss off the weekend, Sorry about that. Um, both teams losing. Both teams not going into this with a bit of form. Um, not many points separate the two teams. I believe it's only three points. Um, West Sydney on 10 points. Sydney FC on seven points. Boys, nonetheless, throw form out the window. Who wants to have a first crack at this? This is a Sydney derby. It's, it's the first one of the year, first one of three, and at the New York Hall Stadium. Uh, we, we might let one of the Sydney boys have a crack first because um, it is their home game. Yeah, look, I think I think just to just to kick it off, look, I think it's been a bit of an interesting start to the season to say the least. I mean, a lot of a lot of um you know, a lot of issues that we've sort of seen over the last couple of years and now going into the start of the season to show a little a little bit more inconsistency, which is quite rare for us to be fair. I mean, we've we've obviously let a few players go. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's it's not just our form that's the issue. It's overly over really just everything that that we're starting to see. You know, the players just looks like the chemistry isn't there. Overall, it's it's the finishing as well. The defense is is lacking. You know, Ryan Grant isn't isn't where he's supposed to be. Over the weekend, we saw you know Redmayne, who absolutely had, I think he had a great game. I think he had an amazing game. You know, he saved the pen, then basically saved another, another potential goal, which ended up being a goal at the end of it because the defense just didn't cover. But I just think overall, I think, you know, it's been hard to watch as a Sydney FC fan, to be fair. Um, I think we know we're better than that. I think we know that we can be better. I think we just need to obviously just – we need to start with some consistency first and foremost. So, 
I'm I'm excited to see what Cork is going to have as a as a plan this week. To be fair, because that's been the main topic after the game on 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 the weekend. So it's about what we do next. So that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, I think both teams need to really bounce back after losses. Obviously, both teams conceding three goals. But to be honest, obviously, I always try to be unbiased. I'm going to say that the Wanderers are the more likely team to win, to win just because they've got a better squad, first of all. And secondly, they do defend better than us because our defense has been leaking goals left, right and center, man. It's just abysmal. And uh, all it takes is just a moment for, for Wanderers to, bow, to pounce and that's it. So I think the Wanderers are the more likely to win the game, but at the same time, the form goes out the window. So... It's going to be interesting to see how Corica sort of formulates his game plan after that loss. And I, I did say that, or Boz actually said it, and I took it off him. He said that uh, Corica would need to replicate the Mariners' game plan, which they had against the, the Mariners, because obviously they had a fantastic game plan with their high pressing and then the halftime substitu- substitutions as well. Garen Cole, Michael Bruce came on, completely changed the game, so... I think that Corica has a lot of homework to do and it'll, de- it'll definitely be an interesting one, especially because it's the first derby at the new Allianz Stadium as well. And then, I just add KG, just, just on the back of that, sorry, just wanted to say, I just really want to give props as well to, to what the Wanderers have done this season. I think the very structure itself has just gone to show what a massive effort that they've gone in the club to basically say, we're taking the style of football to the next level. We're getting these class players in. We've lost Neuenhoff from Sydney FC. We've lost Ninkovic from Sydney FC. Ninkovic wasn't even guaranteed to play half a half, uh, half a game, you know, and he's playing 80 to 89 minutes now. And then you see Neuenhoff basically holding the midfield down. And the one player who's really, really impressed me from the Wanderers is Borello. So I think I think he's having a cracker, cracker season so far, creating opportunities, making himself available. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome to see the Wanderers sort of stepping it up and, you know, show that that style of flair as well. It's it's look, mate. This is this is getting too friendly now. This conversation, but, <laughs> but I, 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 do, I do agree with you, and and we will cross over to Antonio in a second. But just sticking with Sydney FC and you two boys at the moment, um, because you did mention it, Ed. You know, um, just in regards to the Wanderers recruitment and and what Rudin's done, and and we can sort of see the style of play that uh, that Western Sydney Wanderers are now going to play for for the season. We've got. We for so long no identity, no style, and myself and Antonio will touch on that in a second. Do you feel like Sydney FC is currently in that in that limbo at the moment, where where for so long you guys were tried and trusted in terms of your system, and probably now we're at a point where we're not quite sure what Sydney FC is going to bring it week on week. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally think, yeah, like I think that we've grown a reliance on, on our players, you know. We've grown a, grown a reliance on our on our one defender, you know, like there's a star there. We, like we've had Wilkinson who's been quite sturdy over the last few seasons, but, you know, it's just an age thing now. I think it's just the calibre of, of his game style now is sort of a little outdated, if I'm being completely honest. And I think even just holding down the midfield, like you were so used to seeing Ninkovic in there now trying to replace him, trying to get someone there. Caceres obviously does his job really, really well, but... It's again. It's trying to build that chemistry. It's trying to build that foundation within the club to sort of say we need to obviously start showing results and not just, you know, scraping away with these types of wins that we're starting to see over the last couple of weeks. Which I don't want to see as a Sydney FC support. I want to see the boys go out there and absolutely smash it. Yeah, I think um, everyone has figured out how we play as well because like Corica needs to change up the system. He needs to do a lot of these things. So much change is needed. We did recruit uh, well in terms of our attack, but our defence just lacked, just really lacked. And now we're paying the price for that. We're conceding goals left, right and centre. So definitely think that teams have figured us out and Corica is just not doing enough in terms of change. Yeah. yeah. Antonio, if, we, if we're moving on to the Western Sydney side of things, um, like I've, I've just had my little say, how, how do you feel about the season so far? Obviously, we're five rounds in. Um, you know, if you said five rounds in, you're going to have 10 points, three wins, uh, you know, a draw and a loss. Do you feel like Western Sydney are, are, you know, a lot better place than many other, many of our previous years or even from the early days? How are you feeling right now as a Western Sydney Wanderers fan? Um, I'm, I'm feeling confident we're going to have finals football. Um, if you would have asked me at the start of the season, I was still, like you said, we didn't know what our identity was. We didn't know how they were going to play under Rudin. 
Um, the club gave him control. They let him go in. They let him clear his staff, clear his players, get who you want, bring in who you want. But obviously, I guess the big thing that we've lacked for most years, Kev, is we're still lacking that goal scorer, that person can go out there, score week in, week out. Yes, we've held defensively. Besides the weekend, we'd only considered one goal, but we still only scored five goals. And if we go behind to a Sydney FC, I just I don't know where those two, three goals that we might need come from. Man, I think I think you hit the nail on the head because that's that's uh, a little bit of my concern. I know a, a lot of West Sydney Wanderers fans um, sort of share the same sentiment. Um, and Rudin came out and said, I think not last week or the week before, in a, in a press conference, he said. You know, this is not the EPL. This is not, you know, La Liga. You're not going to get a great defense, a great midfield, a great attack. You're going to get one or the other, right? Um, and and it just showed. I think it showed on the weekend and in the preview that we'd done um, both on on this channel and on RBTV with the boys was Central Coast great attack. It was going to be a great attack versus a great defense, and who was going to win? And and you know, with with time, uh, Central Coast prevailed. Similar concerns from me from a Derby perspective. Again, uh, Sydney does have that very hard-to-beat mentality. So when they go ahead, it's very hard to beat them. Um, and we've experienced that many, many times before where even we've taken the lead, but the game's not locked up because we know Sydney's going to come back and score a few goals, right? The, the derbies that we've had have actually been cracker derbies, um, hence why the MacArthur one's the fake derby. Just just putting it out there for this podcast. 100%. Um, I know a couple of my, uh, couple of my Bulls mates are going to give me shit for that, but, but this is the derby and anything can happen and form does go out the window. But I think from a... From an equality perspective, this is probably the first time in which maybe even to Dia's point, where the Sydney Wanderers maybe edge Sydney FC in terms of favoritism for, for this one. But this is probably the closest it's been for a long time. Uh, don't, you, don't you reckon, Antonio, from a Sydney pers- perspective? Yeah, 100%. Obviously, they did have that long reign where they did dominate us. And yes, okay, we got some results, but... This is the first time I'm probably going into a derby with more than 50% confidence, I guess you could say. Um, obviously, we have the players, we have the defence, we have the coach. It's just, again, form goes out the window on a Sydney derby. So hopefully they can stick back to their plans, get back to how they played in the first four weeks. And hopefully me and you, Kev, we're celebrating with a beer come the end of that derby. You know, you never know, mate. You never know. The derbies are always a, a, a tough one, and it's a nerve-wracking 90 minutes. Everyone knows that regardless. Um, and, and like you said, there's been some really great results. I mean, from West Sydney Wanderers' perspective, the one that we'll always remember is the one where we stopped the uh, the, the undefeated streak for, for Sydney FC in, their, in ultimately one of the greatest seasons that they've, they've had in their history. Um, and then, you know, from a Sydney FC perspective, I think it's every time they get to stick it to us Westies. So, um, but... but We'll move on from there. I just want to talk a little bit about maybe some individual p- performances that we're looking forward to this weekend. Who do we who do we think is going to change the game? Or you know, we talk about the Ninkovic's and and look, at, we haven't seen Rodwell for Sydney FC yet, um, but uh, Lolly comes to mind, and and I know that they're doing Sydney FC is doing the whole bring your old Ninkovic jersey and we'll give you a bag of lollies type thing. So everyone's trying to spice this thing up as if it needed any more fuel. But um, if we go around the grounds, maybe starting with you, Dia, who do you feel is is probably going to be the person or, or one or two individuals that might change this game either side? I think just going off the previous games, Lolly and Robert Mack do have the ability to do that. Like, especially because our defense is lacking. I'm going to stress on this. Our defense is lacking. So it's it's almost like our attack needs to do double the work. You know what I'm saying? So... I think Robert Mack and Lolly will definitely be weapons for this game. And if they step up, it is more than likely that they will be scoring goals. So hopefully those two. And and Eddie, from your perspective? Yeah, look, I think Lolly needs to come on um, at the beginning of the game. I think what Corica did over the weekend, like, wasn't what didn't play in our favour. Like, he was he looked dangerous. He looked dangerous in the second half when he had come on. So I think playing him first off is going to make a massive difference straight off the bat. Caceres, I have no doubt, could probably be that game changer as well. But he has to have that will to play over the weekend as well. Um, you know, it's not necessarily just a skill; it's a will from the team. You know, and it's it's a matter of us getting out there and just you know putting the pressure nice and early on the Wanderers to sort of stop any momentum growing. And, and just before we go to the Sydney side of things, um, some not- notable absences. Um, so, I'm, I'm, from understanding, Lafondre is still not going to play. 
this weekend? Yeah, well, I think I, I'm not too sure if he's. he's Corica, Corica said he would be ready for the derby, but I'm not sure if he's like, mm. abs- if that is absolutely the absolutely. case or. Yep. Uh, like, and there was a red car, a red card on the weekend as well. Uh, retro, yeah. Retro, yeah. Retro, yeah. yeah, big loss for you boys. Uh, from my perspective, no. To be honest, tell us, tell us. Uh, uh, for, for me, he's average. Honestly, flat out, he's just average for me. So. And he's been on the bench for the last few games. So for me, I don't really mind. I think Retro's a bit hit and miss, yeah. I think I think he, when he's on, he's on. But, you know, when he's off, he's terribly off. And I don't yeah. think there's any level of consistency with Retro's game style. Like, I just, I, don't, I, I look at him and I can sometimes be like, oh, my God, he's got the ball now. <laughs> you know, like, it sort of frustrates me a little bit, to be fair. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be too much of, a, of an impact to, to Sydney FC. Like I said, we just need to obviously apply the pressure nice and early. And Antonio, from your perspective, West Sydney Wanderers, who's 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 going to control this game? Who's who's going to really, you know, obviously put us in a winning position? Oh, I know. I just obviously spoke about our attack not being there, but I do think Krepic can be that player that does um, kind of set this game up for the Wanderers. I know a disappointing result against Central Coast, but mate, he's one of the best hold-up players that we've had as a striker for years. Um, he wins the headers in the air. He flicks those balls on. So if he can be that dominant striker that we have. He can hold up the ball. He can get that pressure from Sydney FC's defence. A quick slip in behind and our players can get on the break and get in behind that, like we said, that questionable Sydney FC's defence this year. Yeah, and, and look, from a West Sydney Wanderers perspective, I'm sort of looking forward to if we can get Yengi back. Um, I know he hasn't set the world on fire, but uh, a very big presence. Um, I think not that Rami Nadjarin is no good. I just think that Yengi has been playing that position um, his strength out wide is going to be a, a key, similar to what he did against Lee Broxham in the, in the victory, um, the victory against victory. Um, but but Yengis, I, I felt like we missed him a little bit on the weekend where he's got to be that physical presence that somebody has to deal with. Where Rami's a little bit smaller, um, probably, you know, hasn't settled with the team just yet. I think the team still has time to settle. It's only round five. Um, so I think Yengi, if, if, he's, if he's fit for this game, hopefully... Um, I, I hope he can change it for us, and you never you never know. Just see what see what he brings. Before before we go into a couple of other predictions, I want to talk a little bit about marquee status and and cover the two big the, the switches that happened in off season. We're, we're talking Jack Rodwell, and we're talking Milos Ninkovic. And um, I, I rewatched your video, Dia, f- um, today from when you covered um, Ninkovic signing for West Sydney Wanderers, and it sort of gave me that gave me a little bit of that G up. But obviously, such an important part for Sydney FC for so long, part of your history, forever etched, forever a legend. Jack Rodwell for us one season, uh, it's not quite the same. Um, h- how are you guys actually feeling seeing him in the red and black, and and obviously playing against you guys this weekend? Honestly, it hasn't sunk in yet, him in a red and black jersey. It's just still weird for me to see. And you just never expect a club legend like him, someone who spent seven years with us, to just switch to our crosstown rivals. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. First derby at Allianz Stadium. We expected him to be in a sky blue jersey, but he's now he's now with Western Sydney Wanderers. So it is going to be weird and... Uh, he is going to be booed from start to finish every time he touches the ball. I can assure you. <laughs> I've got a lot of respect for Ninkovic. I do. I, thought, I mean, the, the the amount of the amount of things that he's done for Sydney FC to to get them into the position that they've they've gotten to over the last few years. Yeah, I'm with you. I understand with you, dear. <laughs> like, I think I think it's 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 really strange to see him in in the red and black. Like, for me, it doesn't. It it's sort of just like it just it's like a knife straight through the heart. But um. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit, you know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, Sydney Sydney could they have done more to keep Nikovic? Could like you could start asking the what ifs and you know what would have happened in this situation? But I think it's too long gone now, and I think you know it's only justice that you know Nikovic obviously moves on. We obviously got to start with a new game plan because as we all know, Nikovic is obviously getting on as well. But in the same sense, it's not like he's playing poorly either. You know, it's, he's having he's still having a great season, still playing the minutes, playing more minutes than what was anticipated. So. I mean, we'll just see what happens over the next course of the, of the derby. Like, yep. you know, we're, we're playing, we're playing at home too. So, you can only imagine 100%. the City FC fan. It's going absolutely crazy when when yep. we're seeing this happen. You know, so hundred yeah. percent. Yep. 
and, and just for like because look, I could never imagine like a Shinji Ono or a, or or any type of club legend, you know, switching over to to Sydney FC. Um, and but but the thing is, been he's been so effective for Western Sydney, which is which is probably what might disappoint some Sydney FC fans because. Yeah, he's getting on in time, and, and it, it might be his last season, might be second last season, whatever it may be. But you always want to see that club legend sort of finish off with you, um, and and never a cross town rival. Like let him get a Brisbane roar, or let him get a you know, Perth glory, even make what you happy. But like <laughs> you know, to, to see him get cross town is a little bit disappointing. But Antonio, from our perspective, he's been so key to our play this year. Um, how do you see him influencing this derby? Oh, I think um, he's been there before. He knows the ins and outs of Sydney FC. Yes, they've changed their style. They've changed the way they've played this year. But Ninkovic is all class. And I think any Sydney FC fan that can look past, he's gone to Western Sydney, knows that he's a class player on his day. He can control that midfield. He can set up a goal. He might not score as much these days, but he can pop up with a goal. And I'm a man of simple pleasures. If he scores in front of the cove and kisses the badge, I'm a happy man. (laughs) <laughs> That's right, you're trying to start a fight um, <laughs> Look, I mean, you know, no West Sydney Wanderers fan would, would be disappointed to see that um, And he's had his fair share of uh, comments in the, in the off-season around his move and, and whatever whether, whether it's fair or not, but you just can't erase the seven years of success that he had at Sydney And, and all due respect to him as a, as a player, he, he achieved a lot um, at, at Sydney FC. Uh, on the other end, do we even know if Jack Rodwell's going to make an appearance? Is he even fit? Does he make the lineup? Do you think Do you think that he comes on? Uh, I think Corica would sort of uh, give him a crack, but I'm not sure how he is like, in terms of his fitness because he hasn't played any game so far this season and he's just coming back from an injury. So, And I think I'm pretty sure Steve Corica said that he will be ready as well in addition to LaFondra. So, yeah, we'll see if he starts him. Our defense is with leaking goals. He said that he'll be using him as a CB. And last season, when he played as a CB for Western Sydney Wanderers, he was not that great. So I have my doubts, but let's hope that if he plays, he can prove me wrong. Yeah, I'm going to agree into that. I think, yeah, we'll just wait and see what happens. It's a gamble. Either way you look at it, you know, putting him on, he hasn't really had too much game time on, on, on the field. But, I mean... Corrigan's got to change something. It can't, it can't get any worse for a Sydney FC uh, perspective from a defensive, um, you know, outfit. Like if, if he comes in, he can. He either makes it better or it stays the same. It stays however it is. But but it does sound like it's going to be one of those games where you know if if it's either going to be a really tight game with very little goal involvement, or it's just going to be one of those. Three, two, four, threes, or whatever it might end up being. Um, we'll go into that in a second, but. I think there's one thing that we haven't spoken about. Oh, we touched on it lightly um, and, and in and around the booze, but the crowd. The crowd is going to be epic this weekend. If you're in Sydney and you're not at, and you you follow either team or you're in neutral and you're not at the venue this weekend, I don't know where you, where you should be on, on a Saturday night, um, but this is going to be one of those where it's the first derby at the new stadium. Sydney FC would want to get, uh, a result. I mean, both teams want to get a result, but at home, Sydney FC want to start their dominance again. Um, boys, you know, what, what's what's the vibe or what's the, what's the talk around town um, around Saturday night in the crowd? You hit the nail on the head, Kev. Hundred percent. You know, Sydney FC want to win. I think we need to win. We need to obviously prove a point against the Wanderers at home, and it's probably the better time to sort of change our season around just by getting this win and starting getting back on track. You know, we need we need to get the points. We had a horrid result on the weekend, and I think you know the crowd getting behind us. I mean, I was a little disappointed to see that the Cove, sorry, not the Cove, just Sydney FC fans in general, like we, they hadn't sold out the, the stadium just as yet, even though it's our home ground. Um, I think the more the more obviously our team progresses, it's obviously a matter of just you know we need to obviously get behind our team, irrespective of what the results are. We're not doing poorly, you know. Yes, there's been a couple of results that haven't gone our way, but either or, I think you know what it's going to be a cracker game. There's going to be a lot of tension between the two sides. You know, the RVB is always turning up, always being loud and rowdy as they always get. And you know what, whether you like it or not, you can't say it's an, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing amazing atmosphere. You can't complain with that. Yeah, 100%. Eddie pretty much said it all. I have to be there, sell out. It's a must, especially because we haven't sold out any game so far this season out of our two home games. 
Uh, obviously, the first game was a 23K attendance, I believe. Then against Adelaide, it was 16K. So let's hope that it's at least in the late 30s, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, you'd really hope so because um, from a Sydney FC perspective, the, the big blue like probably should have been a sell up or a sell out or close yep. to as close to a sell out you could probably get, with the exception of the away bays. But um, but yeah, it, it, it's going to be a big one. Sorry, Antonio, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you off there, mate. I'll have, you know, want to no, hear from you. That's all right. I was just going to say I was there obviously for the grand opening. It was a different sporting code, obviously, with the uh, little egg getting thrown around, but. Again, the, the RBB, the Cove, it's known for the atmosphere and that's something that lacked from the grand opening. If there's anything I've got to take is this place echoes. This place gets twice as loud when you're in it. So no matter the result, this place is going to be pumping. And like you said, if there's a few tickets left, if there's a 1,000 tickets left, you'd be crazy not to snap them up and be there because there's no place I'd rather be on a Saturday. Yeah, and look, new, news is uh, you know sort of flowing through some of the some of the chats that that I've got flowing around from both sets of fans. But it's going to be a big one from from perspective of active support. And they're going to go absolutely nuts at each other on Saturday night. So I, I know I know in the past people have gone to these kind of derbies. Let's say if they're a neutral, just to watch the active supporters. And if you want to get down to one, there's no better time. I'm I'm telling you, Sydney FC. I, I mean, look, both teams rock up regardless because it's a derby, but a derby where both teams are performing well um, early on in the season, new stadium, acoustics galore. Like you're just going to love the vibrations, the echoes. I reckon it's going to be a spectacle. So if you're not, if you don't have your ticket, go and get one now because you're going to be crazy to miss out. Um, but yeah, both sets of supporters from what I'm hearing are, are ready to turn up. So it's going to, it's going to be an epic one. Now, boys, just so we can uh, sort of start closing off, let's um, let's each one of us give a prediction. So if we can uh, give a scoreline prediction and maybe you know how it's going to pan out, whether a goal scorer or a, you know a red card or something, whatever whatever's in your imagination, we'll go around the grounds. Uh, Eddie, you can kick off. Yeah, look, it's it's going to be a difficult one. Um, I know, dear, you said Wanderers. Um, I'm going to stick with the, the faithful of City FC here. Like I said, they've got a point to prove here. So I think it's going to be a really tight one. I'm thinking it's 2-1, Sydney. I don't think it's, I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Um, like I said, we, we can't afford to concede goals this week. We need to obviously stay strong, um, whether that might be a biased perspective. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we've just got to, got to try to, try, we've got to try to do something different here. So, yeah, I think, you know, if, if we're looking at goal scorers, I think, yeah, bringing on Lolly nice and early into the game might, might be the, the clinical finish for us. Antonio, I'll cross over to you, mate. Give us your prediction. I'm going to go with the Wanderers 2-0. Um, it might be biased. It might be unbiased. I just think the defence is going to win this game. Um, we say it all the time. Defence wins premierships. They win championships. And I just think the Wanderers' defence will get them on the front foot. They might ca- catch Sydney off guard with a counter-attack. Um, I'm going to go Krepic. I'm going to say there's a penalty. I think Krepic converts the penalty. And then, like I said, the second goal, if it can be Ninkovic, I'm a happy man. Yeah, oh, so Ninkovic doesn't get the penalty. Nah, Ninkovic doesn't get the penalty. Ooh. He'll, he'll score the second one. He'll score the second one. You've got to go with who takes your penalties. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, DR, mate, your your prediction? I'll go for a 3-2 Wanderers win. Uh, I think Ooh. that just because our attack is so good, our defence is not so good. So the Wanderers will be able to score goals. And on the other end, we will be able to score goals. But I think that it'll be 2-0 to Wanderers first and then... Uh, we'll score two goals and then the Wanderers uh, should be able to snatch one in the end, trying to be as unbiased as possible. So, yeah. But I hope I'm wrong, of course. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> From your mouth to the sporting gods' ears, mate, please. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't see Sydney FC not scoring, so I'm, I'm, I am going to go with the Western Sydney Wanderers win. I'm probably going to go 2-1. Something tells me there's a corner. Marcelo is going to get his head to it. I think he's going to score the first goal. Um, or sorry, his first goal for the West Sydney Wanderers might be the winner. Um, just pumping that chest as a captain, you know, getting in there after scoring a header. I'd I'd love to see that. But um, I th- I think for majority of us, there's goals galore in this one. Um, it's not going to be a stalemate. Let's let's hope not 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 like the opener last year. Um, but that's that's the Sydney derby. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There'll be a bunch of us uh, joyful and a bunch of us uh, probably crying after Saturday night. I, I don't really see a draw happening either. I just think if it's a draw, mate, 
let's let's just look forward to the next one after that. We won't even come back and do a review. But um, boys, let's let's finish off the rest. There are four other matches. There's one going to be postponed. It's the uh, the Perth Glory Brisbane match. Um, that's that's being postponed this round um, over into. Um, after the World Cup in, in January, they, they're going to be playing that match. There are four other matches. Um, Friday night, we've got Adelaide United and Melbourne Victory. Uh, boys, just a quick prediction. Uh, who wins and maybe a scoreline? Um, Antonio, we'll start with you. I'm going to go with Victory. I think with Nani and obviously Fornaroli going over there, I think they've just got too much class. Obviously, it is an original derby. It is a cracking game that is going to be. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1 to the victory, and I'm going to say that Fonaroli gets on the score sheet again. Sweet. there. I'll go for a 2-1 Melbourne victory win, since Melbourne victory have scored four goals against Newcastle, and they do have the goals in them. Adelaide, obviously, are a good team as well, but I just think that Melbourne victory are the favourites for this one. Eddie? Yeah, I'm going to go victory as well. I think probably about 2-1, two, 2-0 two, result looks a bit fair for them. Um, yeah, I just think they've been getting better and better each week, Melbourne victory. Um, you know, it's 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 a, it's just a battle for them just to sort of start getting some form. And I think, yeah, like, like we've said, uh, Fauna Raleigh coming on board is just, you know, key signing for them. I'm throwing the spanner in the works, boys. It's a draw. Two or a draw. Um, Fauna Raleigh will help the attack. But um, Cooper Stadium is just one of those places where you don't, you know, I don't like going there. Um, and, and, and I think the Adelaide crowd might get, might, you know, help them get a result. Uh, moving on to the first Saturday game, five o'clock kickoff, which is Newcastle Jets and Melbourne City. Uh, we'll go back, Antonio. I just think City have way too much class for Newcastle. Obviously, Newcastle got pumped in their last game, and I just think City's a different beast, and they're going to go on with it. I'm going to go 3 or 4 nil to uh, Melbourne City. Yep, there. Uh, I'll go for three nil Melbourne City. Obviously, they have uh, some of the best strikers and wingers in the league, so they should have the ability to score goals. And I just don't see Newcastle producing anything special. Eddie, throwing it, throwing it in there, five nil for City. Um, I only think, yeah, I think that the just this the the fact that you know you got a few players there already who are playing for soccer is in the World Cup. You know, they've got a statement. So I think just with that alone, you know, you got to, you got to think to yourself, they've got to absolutely go out there to smash them. So see what happens. See, Eddie, this is my worry. So so this is where I am going to go with City, but it's not going to be a 5-0, 4-0. I think it's going to be a 1 or a 2-0 win. They're going to, they're going to, now that they know that they're in the soccer Roos squad, they don't want to get injured. They're going to, they're going to take their foot off the pedal a little bit here. Um, I think they'll get the victory. Maybe even a 2-1. Newcastle do have some goals in them here and there. But I think that's what worries me about Melbourne City right now is the, is the players are going to take their foot off the pedal a little bit because they know they're going to a World Cup. Last thing they want to do is pick up injuries. But we'll wait and see. Um, obviously, the derbies are the sat- uh, Saturday night game. Then we've got Sunday. We've got Wellington Phoenix at home to Western. Poor Western United defending champs with one point. With one point. Antonio, what do you th- what do you think? Um, oh, they've been poor this year. Obviously, last year's highs have now been met with this year's low. But I'm going to go for them to get another point here, and I'm going to go a one-one draw. I think Wellington will go up early, but Western will pull it back and get a deserved point. Nice, yeah. Uh, I'll say two-one Wellington. Western United have been very shaky defensively. Uh, obviously, not as or they have been worse than us, <laughs> which is weird to say. But yeah, uh, Leo Lacroix has been very poor. And um, so, yeah, I just don't see them producing anything special. Just one goal, and Wellington should be able to get the W. Yep, Eddie? I'm the same. I think Wellington, yeah, I think Wellington have enough to just to, to see the match out quite comfortably, to be fair. don't think um, West United have produced quality football this season to even get them up in the ranks. So, yeah, look, I think 2-1 is a fair result. Yeah, I think Wellington will be too strong at home. I think um, I think West United just missed Previch too much um, from last year. He was their outlet going forward. Um, I know not much has changed in terms of squad, but but that one point man up top it just changes everything. Where the likes of um, oh jeez, I've, I've just like Wenzel Halls and I forgot the other the other attacking player. Uh, his name's going to come to me a bit later, but they they just they used to work off him really well, um, and I just uh, Lucky Wales. Um, and I think they used to just run off him really well where you're missing him, and, and I just don't think it's the same for them anymore. 
So Wellington, that one. And to round round off the round, um, for this round six will be Central Coast Mariners and MacArthur FC. Antonio? Um, I think Central Coast, after watching what they did to us, if they can go in with the same game plan, they'll have enough to get past MacArthur. But I'm going to go uh, Central Coast 2-1, but I do have in the back of my head, like you said, there's a few players that are in that Australian squad. So will they take the foot off the pedal? Will they come off the bench like they did against the Wanderers? I don't know, but I'm going to go 2-1 and think they get the job done. Nice. Dale? Uh, I'll say to all just because both teams are pretty good going forward. And, uh, yeah, I think it will be an end-to-end game. So, yeah, Toto. Eddie? I'm going to say 1-0 uh, to the Bulls. Um, yeah, I think, again, I think the the fact that you've got a couple of players already who made a massive impact against Sydney FC are now in the Australian squad. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be a bit challenging, especially considering that um, you know it's 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 a must win for both for, for both clubs as well. But I think Macarthur probably just uh, might inch out just to get the win. Yeah, you want to go into this. Uh, I guess it's an international break because of the World Cup. You want to go into it off a win, so it's gonna be a tough one. I, I'm gonna lead towards uh, Macarthur a little bit. I think the whole Daniel Arzani factor and him not getting selected for the Socceroos might. I sort of give him a bit of a G up um, because look, the, the thing is, I don't know what happens from here, but should there be injuries to that squad, perhaps he might get a late call up. I don't know if that's even possible, but just throwing it out there, I think he's, he's still got a point to prove anyway. If, if he wants to even get called up for the soccer post, post the world cup, depending on how we go there. But um, I think MacArthur might get there just purely off the back that come dog. I, I think he's going to, sort of take it easy, Qual and uh, and everybody else. But you just never know. I might say that in Central Coast win 4-0. So, hey, you know, you know, we'll put it out there. But, boys, look, um, first and foremost, thanks for covering the derby with me. It's going to be an amazing game on Saturday night. Thanks for previewing the rest of the round as well. Um, just as we sign off, we'll go around the grounds. Again, plug your socials, um, and then uh, we'll wrap up. Antonio, we'll start with you, mate. Obviously, for the round ball, it's at the Football Tragics. And for the egg ball, as you like to call it, it's at the Gorn for 10 show. So looking forward to seeing you over there and looking forward to listening to the other boys' podcast too. Appreciate it, Dale. Uh, for me, it's Sydney Football TV on YouTube. And on Instagram, it is Sydney Football TV, just one word, without any spaces or anything like that. And on Twitter, it's just Sid, Sid Football TV. Nice. Thanks, Dale. Eddie? Uh, for me, both YouTube and Instagram is uh, Let's Talk It Out podcast. Um, but yeah, like I said, really, really excited for the game this weekend. Um, but yeah, looking forward to see everyone else's socials as well and get on board. It's going to be a cracker. We love collaborating, especially on the football capital with everybody else out there doing coverage of the round ball game. Um, we'll, we'll still check out your other stuff, Antonio, don't worry. Um, and, and guys, for for anything um, men's mental health, please check out Let's Talk It Out podcast. Um, Eddie and Chris have been doing an amazing job raising awareness on men's uh, mental health. It's it's not an easy topic to, to discuss. I've listened to many of their podcasts um, and it's some really good stuff. So please, let's make sure that we like, share and subscribe and continue to collaborate. And until next time, we'll see you guys around. See you later, mate. See you guys.